Hello everyone, this is Ray Space back with more on the Stubby Starship Lander in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In a comment to the previous video, plain text suggested that maybe we shouldn't be carrying 100 tons down to the lunar surface anyway, since the NASA contract doesn't require anything like that. And so I cut down the payload to 30 tons to see if that will help us recover super heavy, because I sort of feel like I want to recover Super Heavy, at least when the lander launches. The trick here is that we can't have Super Heavy getting too far out to come back safely. And it's carrying less, so it can very easily go too far. And so we have to strike a good balance between the amount of Delta V that we use from Super Heavy and how much we have available in the lander. The lander is obviously so light because it doesn't have as much fuel, uh, but that means that if it's trying to carry 100 tons, it doesn't have the same delta B to get to orbit that the full Starship has. So here we're just carrying 30 tons. We also have solar panels and radiators on. They're just the stock radiators and stock solar panels. And maybe I need better ones, but uh, we'll see why in a bit. Now this is being controlled by KOS, by P.E.K.K.A's launch script, of course, and this was not the first launch of this during the test sequence on Twitch. This is the one that was successful, and in the course of testing, I had to fix a bunch of things because it, it Super Heavy is not launching Starship, and there are numbers to fix, and also at one point I needed to add parentheses around something because the script wasn't actually operating right. But the net result of that is that I already knew that Super Heavy was keeping enough fuel to make it back. It uh, ends up having about 4,200 meters per second left in it, and so that's quite enough. We we're only getting to about 2,200 meters per second surface velocity, and it doesn't need as... It needs, according to P.E.K.K.A., 1.5 times the surface speed plus 700, presumably 700 for landing. So that's the margin, and it has more than that, so we're good. And this gets to orbit with the 30 tons, so that part is okay. We can, with 30 tons inside, get to orbit, no problems, have some fuel left to uh, use there. Uh, now, with the 30 tons, how much do we need for a moon landing, right? If we carry less, we can use less fuel for the moon landing, and then we need less for the depot to bring over, so that's all great. And here I'm judging that. And of course, normally I want 4,600 meters per second to do a landing and lift off from the moon. So that's usually 2,400 for descent and 2,200 for ascent. Though you can easily use less than that. So then on the depot side, I get to 51.4 meters long and then try to reserve the fuel that would be necessary to refuel the lander. So I'm locking those tanks and uh, we actually have one tank that has less in it than it normally would and I find out that this setup has 5,343 meters per second which is more than enough. So we don't even have to totally fuel this in order to have it do the job because all we need is 3,200 to transfer to the moon and then 800 more to capture around the moon, some more to do the docking and everything. So we're looking at maybe we could not refuel this completely. Now that's 1600 tons right now. So maybe we can lose a segment or something would be better. So I'll try and cut that down. So that will reduce how many refueling trips we need to top it off. Now the regular starships that are going to be doing the refueling in low earth orbit are going to need to dock on the side there. They don't have the nose cone thing. They're normal starships, so they've got the header tanks up there, and we are not going to have the nose open up and have the docking port in the nose. So using this normal starship, we put the 100 tons of fuel there. I'm hoping that it can get 100 tons to orbit. This is what this is testing right now. And then we will also want to dock this to the lander to see that the docking ports work okay and all the docking stuff is fine. Here I'm changing the Raptors to Raptor 3s so to make sure that we have the ability to get the 100 tons to orbit. I presume that by the time we get to this stage in development they will be using Raptor 3s. So here we go. 
We've got all of Pekka's effects going on, and of course the launch script doing its business as normal. Launching with 100 tons to orbit. Now, the Raptor 3s, I don't know if they were right mass, because they didn't seem to be switching mass when I switched the engine type. They did switch the thrust and a little change to the ISP, but not to the mass of them, so... Really, the main difference, the main benefit is actually the mass, but I don't know which mass is being used right there. Okay, as we ascend from Cape Canaveral here. Now, we haven't taken much time between the flights, and that means that this is going to have to do an inclination adjustment to get into the right plane with the target. It's about 1.2 degrees, so not a huge thing. Uh, Pekka said that it should be reserving, technically it should be reserving the header tanks for landing, but I didn't fit the header tanks in because I didn't have them. Uh, Pekka has made them a separate part uh, for balance reasons. So I decided that I'd be reserving about 600 meters per second for landing, which Pekka said that was about right. Uh, that would be about how much the header tanks have. And as it turns out, that would be fine. Uh, when we make orbit, we make orbit with more than that, uh, more than enough to do the adjustments, and that's with the 100 tons in the bay. So we have more than, we can see here, as we make orbit, with the 100 tons in the bay, we have 1,100 meters per second. So that's no problem. What's optimistic here, I have no idea. I sincerely hope that they can get 100 tons to orbit with the Raptor 3s and with the advanced Starship, they better. Anyway, here we are doing a maneuver. Uh, oh, we've got an extra engine there. Okay, so there's something weird going on with this Starship and its RCS, clearly. And that's why the Delta V is reading differently here. Uh, Pekka tried to use an engine module on it for dumping the fuel, and... That seems to be complicated things. I'll fix that. But the upshot of that is we couldn't use the RCS on there. There wasn't an RCS module being listed on that Starship. So it can't do the docking. This has to. But then I encountered another problem. And that's that this started randomly reading my throttle. And I have a throttle quadrant for flight sim. And when it randomly decided to read the throttle quadrant, it fired the engines and so we lost more like that. It also had an unusual amount of boil off. I turned on the radiators, but yeah, it had too much boil off and that's gonna be a problem. It might be due to the tank type uh, or we just need to put all the MLI layers available on there. I've only put 40, uh, we might need to put more. So anyway, we lost some fuel like that but I encountered another problem, or realized another problem existed as we approached the Starship with the fuel here. And that problem is that the docking port on this one is partly obstructed by the radiators, so we're probably not going to be able to dock. I decided to try and get a Kerbal out to see if the Kerbal could remove it, but Normally what I'd use for this is USI's like destruct feature where it, you can just explode parts. That's super handy, but I don't have USI in here. And uh, there's the engineering feature. The stock engineering feature, I don't know exactly how it works. I'm so used to KIS, but I didn't give them any drills, so we can't use the drills to take it off. Uh, but I tried to have Bill here use the engineering system, but didn't seem to have that going on here. If somebody who knows the stock engineering system where engineers can move stuff around, I don't know if we need the DLC for that or what's going on here, but yeah, I just don't have as much experience with the stock engineering system to know why Bill can't just take off a radiator right now which is what I want Bill to do, but yeah, since that wasn't going to work, I just sent Bill back in. So we really can't dock here because the docking port is being obstructed, but I decided to try to approach for docking anyway, and in the process of testing it out, discovered that the RCS on the lander isn't great 
for trying to dock at this point. Uh, the RCS placements, both on the regular Starship and on the lander, are based on basically convenience, where they would go best. And that's not the best for trying to maneuver like this. So I'll probably make some adjustments and add perhaps some phantom ones for now, because I don't want to mess with the model. The model has visible apertures for the existing RCS ports, but until I'm sure I need the ones that I intend to add, I don't want to change the model that much. So I'll just add the vectors for the RCS thrusters without adding the gaps, if you will. So here it approaches, but it's not going to be able to dock. I mean, yeah, we can see that we're not lining up perfectly at all, and that's because the thrusters, when they try to push us in the direction I want, they also add residual velocity in a direction I don't want, basically. So that's what I need to fix. Anyway, a few things obviously need to be fixed before I can proceed with the mission, but I think the 30 tons is probably a good idea, so I, I'll go with plain text's suggestion. That is certainly going to save us a lot of trouble. And the Raptor 3s seem good enough for bringing the 100 tons to orbit at least, so we can do that. I don't think we can bring too much extra, but we can try pushing it a little bit more. Um, I'll see what I can do. But at least we won't need as many refueling trips for the depot when the depot tries to refuel the lander. We still need to fully refuel the depot when trying to do the transfer to the moon. I was checking on boil off there. So yeah, we do have to do the full whatever 14 it is. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.